Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series on the Mr. FPGA DE10 Nanoboard project. And today we're going to be talking about is composite video look. Because back in the day, even though we have PVMs now and RGB and upscalers, we used to use composite video signal if you were lucky, and maybe in your gaming history you started off in an RF adapter. I know for Sega Genesis I had to go to channel 4 back in the day. And we have all these amazing things now like pure RGB with sync, but back in the early 90s composite video was basically all you got until maybe your family bought a TV that had S-video. But a lot of people are nostalgic for that composite video look, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Because a lot of artists use that composite blending look back in the day to make the sprite work and background layers look ever so slightly nicer. Before we get too deep involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we've got a Patreon link down below as well. But taking a look at Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Sega Genesis, this was the game that I originally played in RF until I got a TV that had composite. And what we can do is go into the scale filter settings and pick composite blend. Let's just start with a 25%. And you will see if you have a sharp eye, the sprite works and the pixels are now getting blended a little bit because the composite video signal had all of the different data that carried video on one connector. When you went to S-Video, you had chrominance and luminance separated, and then from there with RGB, you have every color in its own signal with sync. But we can play around with the scale filter, turn it on and off, and you'll see that that waterfall in the background gets sharper or more blurred depending on what setting we use. There's a ton of different composite filters and you can play around with them, and you can definitely drive it too hard and make the whole screen look a little bit Vaseline-y like we've done here with that 100% or that 100 rating. But we're going to play around with it and see if we can find a setting that we like for that composite blend. Because this is what televisions looked like back in the 90s. And when they were doing something like making that waterfall there, I've turned scan lines on just for fun because they do look decent with the blend. The pixel artist knew that the TV was going to blend out some of the graphics. So some of those sharp pixel edges are things that the sprite art workers were trying to hide were hidden by that television. And now if we take a look at this waterfall right here, it's a really nice place to compare them side by side to see what it looks like when we're on that super sharp image versus that composite blend. And this is where things get really interesting because composite blend on the left and Mr. HDMI with no internal filter on the right, that waterfall looks ever so slightly blended and we have the perfect ring count right now. Good job, Sonic. But if we move over to a different game, that has a little bit more going on in it, something like Gunstar Heroes, if we even turn on that internal composite filter while this logo is rotating around in that pseudo polygonal effect, I feel like it looks ever so slightly smoother to my eye. Now with all filters in Mister, on a computer with MAME, anything, I find it to be subjective depending on what game you're playing. I think some games really benefit from something like a composite blended filter. I think some games suffer for it. You're going to have to play around and decide what works best for you. But playing Gunstar Heroes with the composite blend on, it looks really nice and it takes a little bit of that sharp pixel harshness away. Now I like big chunky pixels. I don't mind them whatsoever, but some people, especially if they're remembering what televisions looked like in the 90s, don't find them to be that attractive. But if we switch over to the, you know, internal chunky filters, I think Gunstar Heroes looks relatively as nice without the filter on. And that's what I mean by subjectivity. You're going to decide game by game what you like and what you don't like. There is no wrong answer, quote unquote, with filters. Some people will say it doesn't look right, and maybe technically they're correct. It doesn't look like what the source footage from a TV in the 90s would have looked like. But if it looks right to you, that's all I really care about. And that's what I want you to take away from this video is that we have to make sure it looks good to our eye. But if we pause it here, take a look at the clouds. You'll see that pixelation in them. But if we go ahead and turn that internal filter on, the pixelation in the clouds is going to get smoother. It doesn't look like a pixely quote unquote mess, but it actually looks like a cloud. And if we put them side by side, you can see the difference with the composite blend on the right. And if we zoom in even further, 
it just looks more like a cloud to me. That cityscape in the background looks a little bit more like it's hazy, like there's a little bit of pollution. That's what composite blending did back in the day. It wasn't really blending, it was just composite. It allowed the art to be a little bit more subtle and drive a little bit more of the impact that the sprite artists were going for. But let's move over to something on Super Nintendo, Pocky and Rocky. Also, as a side note, excellent game if you never played. I can't recommend it enough. This is another one of my favorite games on Super Nintendo. And if we just pop that filter on the menu alone, look at the words Pocky and Rocky. They're very sharp. They're very pixelated. And if we pop that filter on, it just maybe takes like 10 to 20% of that pixelation out of the image. That's what the filter is doing. I find that I enjoy it more on bright, colorful, vibrant games than I do on darker games, and I'll show some darker games later on. And I find that with almost all filters on Mistor or in general, the lighter the image, the more vibrant the colors, the brighter the whites on screen, the more I think filters benefit them, and I think Pocky and Rocky is an excellent game to show that off. And do remember, between having to capture this and YouTube video compression, some of the things I want to show off might not be as detailed, but watch those trees in the upper edge of the screen. As we switch filters from one to the other, they're going to get a little less blurry or a little more blurry. And this is what I mean again, all subjective. You get to decide what works best for you, but that's what I love about Mister is there's so many different options between the shadow mask that I showed before and the composite blend filter here. You really get to choose what you want. And look at those trees again. You'll see they go blurry, and then they get a little bit more pixelated when we turn it off. I think both look nice, but for me, that little bit of blur in the trees makes them look more like trees, and I enjoy it. But if we turn it off, the game is still incredible, and it still looks great. It's so much fun to just be able to toggle these options on and off at a moment's notice and you get to decide what you're into at that moment in time. But like I mentioned earlier, some games I just don't think the composite blend looks that good on. Demon's Crest here, an absolutely spectacular game. I love the pixelated nature of it. I think it looks great right here. And if we put that blending on, I think the softness actually detracts a little bit from the image. Maybe some of that fog on the bottom of the screen looks a little bit more natural. But for some reason, I'm just not as into the composite blend filters on darker games. I don't know what it is, and you can leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you think. But I just like the internal HDMI scaling options that Mr. provides. So if we take a look at that dragon in the back, it's a little bit blended, but when we go over and turn the filter off, that slight pixelation makes it look a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more poppy, and I just see it more. Now each console is going to give you different results. If I turn scaling on here and I go into composite blend and pick that horizontal 25, you're going to see those cactuses really start to blur out in the background. It's a little bit more dramatic on Nintendo than it is on the other consoles I've shown so far. But this honestly is how I remember Super Mario Bros. 3 looking, because again, when I played this game, it was probably an RF. It probably looked even worse than this. But if we switch over to the internal scaler HDMI with no composite blending on, you're going to see the image sharpen up. Those pixels are going to be sharper. Which one do you think looks better? Leave me a comment down below because I really am curious to hear what you guys think about what these filters look like and what you prefer. And again in Metroid first, with no composite blend on, you'll see me turn it on in real time and watch all the different pixels. They blur out a little bit and this to me looks perfect. I love the look of this because in the Nintendo games, maybe those pixels are a little bit too sharp. Now your results are going to vary. In something like Game Boy Advance, where the artists weren't really working with composite blending because they had an LCD screen in there, if we turn this filter on, it just gets to be a blurry, smeary mess. It's not saying it's not doing what it's supposed to do. What I'm saying is it doesn't look good in this instance. So there's some cores, some platforms that I just think composite blend does not look good on whatsoever, and I would definitely say Game Boy Advance is one of them. If you're into this look, more power to you. Keep it on. Enjoy it. That's great. But I feel like Game Boy Advance is supposed to be chunky pixels. And when I go back to the original settings with that scaler off, I think this looks perfect. So that's what I mean when I say your results may vary. And just for one last comparison of a dark game, we're taking a look at Daimakimura on the super graphics. And again, in this instance, we have both dark colors as well as bright, vibrant colors. That brick wall there, that white is relatively, you know, kind of like a yellowish white. And if I pause the game and go ahead and switch around on the filters, you can see how many different things we can do. And the great thing here is how many options there truly are. We have 
all of these just straight composite blends, composite blends with scan lines horizontally, vertically, or both. I'm not saying that any of these are the right choice. I'm saying that isn't it great that we have this many choices. And if I just go ahead and put that composite H25 back on, and that wall looks a little bit smoother, and this is a game that's a little darker, but I actually kind of prefer the look to that composite blend. But you get to decide, and that's the great part. If you have any questions about composite blending, leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you like your settings to be, and tell me, do you remember even using composite back in the day, or were you got into retro gaming in the RGB era? Sure that I'll have a video on Mr. next week, and I'll have videos throughout the week as well. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.